Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80s Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the 1982 slasher film, Boarding House. We will take a look at the, the plot, the setting, the kills, the nudity. Uh, we'll, we'll take a closer look at the Blu-ray itself uh, before wrapping it all up with some final thoughts. So, um, this was a first-time watch for me. I had never seen this movie before. I was quite familiar with it. Um, you know, growing up, I had seen it on the video shelf stores occasionally. Not, not a lot, but you know, I, I was aware of this film movie growing up. Um, you know, the, the reputation, mostly in recent years that, that I, that I've heard about this film is that it's, uh, well, first off, that it's a bad film. Secondly, it's kind of, um, I don't know if you want to call it important, but I think it's one of the first films, if not the first film that was shot on video that was released in theaters. And apparently in order to do that, they, they shot this they shot this movie on video, and then they converted the video print to film to put it in theaters, which is crazy. Um, so we'll talk about that because there is a few different viewing options. When we talk about the Blu-ray, we'll, we'll get into all of that. Um, and then the other thing I knew about this film was that there was some weird, like, psychedelic color change, technicolor type crazy stuff going on. So those are my impressions going into this. And uh, now after having seen it, um, all those reputations, I believe, are valid. Um, because it, it, it is all of those things. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go out and say this right at the beginning. Um, I did not enjoy this film um, at all. Um, did I hate it? I'm not sure. I'm still... You know, it, it, it's uh, it's still kind of floating around in my head. I'm um, still pretty fresh, so I'm still trying to make sense of, out of it. Um, but make no mistake about it, this is a bad film. Um, that, yeah, this film doesn't have too many redeeming qualities, in, in my opinion, of course. Um, you know, and I'm just, I'm, I'm just kind of at the stage now, I'm just debating with myself whether or not... There is like any aspects to this film that would make it as one of those, you know, so bad it's good style of films. Um, you know, kind of similar to like, you know, the like the don't don't go in the woods alone, Splatter University. You know, those are films that are not good. Nobody's gonna argue they're good, but they're they're fun. They're, there's a charm to them. Um, they're so bad that you enjoy them. Like you know, so um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still debating. Um, where this lies within that little sub sub genre, um, I, I'm leaning towards no, right now. But um, you know, let let's go through this this review. We'll, you know, we'll talk it out, and um, maybe I will change my mind by the end of this. I don't know. So let's let let's just get right into it, and uh, yeah, let let's take a look at the plot. Okay, um, I'm gonna do my best <laughs> to to sum up this plot. Uh, it 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 will be difficult. Um, basically, the film starts off. We have some funny little like um, like I don't know, like MS DOS or whatever whatever you call like just computer text on um, black screen with the green text, and it's basically showing uh, like a case history of like uh, basically like it starts off with people but it's basically showing like like this particular house all the occupants of this one house that have lived there and they've all get murdered they all committed suicide fell down stairs all mysterious like circumstances surrounding this this one house where, the, where this film takes place um so, you know, and there's these people associated with it, like it keeps getting passed down or bought and sold, what, whatnot. This is all like shown on like a computer screen. And eventually at the end of this little, you know, written backstory, um, you know, we get like the newest donor. You know, he, he buys the house, it's finally his. And then we see him, you know, and he's kind of a weird dude. He's into like mysticism or magic or some supernatural stuff, which plays a part in this movie. This is a supernatural slasher. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, he starts moving in, and he rents out, you know, makes it a boarding house, and, like, the only people who move in are all these attractive women. Like, there must be, like, five to ten, seven, eight women that, that he, he rents these rooms to, so the whole house is filled. He has, like, a really nice pool with a hot tub, and he's just like, like, we're gonna have parties and fun and all that stuff, so. And then, um, so we get that set up. And then we just see a whole bunch of random scenes of the, the owner of the house and the, the women that are living there. And they're having a, some little subplot issues with ex-boyfriends or whatnot. Um, one girl's in a band, so we see some stuff dealing with an agent trying to... And then they, they plan a party, like a, like a welcoming open... Or a, what do you call it? Like a housewarming party... Um, and that's pretty much it, just random bits and pieces thrown in here and there, and then eventually people start to die. And then we get to a big reveal at the end, and it all wraps up. That's it. I know, there's, there's not, <laughs> there's not really much. So, honestly, from, um, from start to finish, I kept asking myself, throughout the whole film multiple times I kept asking myself like what am I watching like what what is this I I I, I don't even know if there was a plot to this film um I guess I guess there is like some kind of a story as the movie unfolds but it sure didn't feel like it um while I was watching it you know like by the time the movie gets to its conclusion, and I'm like, okay, there's a, a, a storyline in here. But yeah, like, while you're watching it, I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. There's there's no real plot to follow. It was, um, yeah. And like I said, th that's the biggest issue that I had with this, fi with this movie. I keep wanting to call it a film, but I guess... Anyway. Um, it, it said that it was... <laughs> the biggest issue was that it was really hard to follow. Um... It just, I, I don't know, like, the, like the, the movie itself, honestly, it consisted of random scenes that, you know, jumped from, like, the next scene. And, and you just kept going from scene to scene to scene. Um, and, you know, in, in each, each tra transition, it was, like, edited really rough. Like, it just, like, abruptly ends, start a new scene. And they don't link up. So it's like one person's story, it ends, and you go to another person, and you're like, what? And then you go back, it's just, it's it's all over the place. Um, and they, these scenes, they, 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 there's no cohesion between them. It's just, you're just left feeling confused, and like you don't really know a lot of the characters' names, and like, like all the blondes look alike, all the brunettes look alike. It's, it's really confusing, at, at least for me. Um, so yeah, in terms of like plot and pacing... This was a tough watch for me. Uh, and honestly, it was pretty painful at times. It felt like the longest hour and a half that I've watched a movie in a really long time. Um, I kept looking at the clock, and I'm just like, man, I'm only 20 minutes in. And then you look, and you're like, oh, man, I'm only 40 minutes in. It just kept going on and on. It was it was hard. It was hard to get through. It really tested my... Um, my, my bad movie patience, I guess. I don't know. And I'm pretty good for that, usually. I like a good bad movie. But when the story is structured like this, it's just, you don't know what's going on. You don't know. It's just, ah, oh, man. It was a mess. Um, yeah, honestly, I, I don't know what else to say about this plot. It's, it's, everything I said pretty much sums it up. Um, there's, there's not really a lot going on here. Um, now, like I said, by the time the movie ended, I, I, I feel like I did have a sense of what the film's story was about, what they were trying to, the story they were trying to tell. But, um, at the same time, even though I kind of understood the story, it still didn't make any sense. You know, once I understood it, once I, I grasped, like, the whole entirety of the movie. Um... Yeah, it, it just, it didn't, it didn't work for me. And then they tried to have this big reveal, you know, slashers have these reveals at the end of who the killer is, what they're doing, what's the reason, and it kind of had, it, it, it had that. Um, but it, it was terrible, honestly, it, it was, it didn't work for me, it was really stupid. Um, again, I'm 
not a fan of supernatural slasher, so maybe that's my bias coming in a little bit, but I didn't like it at all. And it was actually kind of annoying on, like, the ears. Like, there was some... The finale, there was some screaming and stuff, and it was just like... I was like, oh, man, when is this going to end? And, uh, yeah, just like everything else, um, it, it I, I felt like the big twist reveal kind of just added more questions than answers. Yeah, so... I, Honestly, I think Boarding House has one of the worst plots in one of these films that I've ever seen. It's 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 really bad. It's um, it's not only bad. It it's boring. Like because of like you don't identify with any of the characters. You don't you, you, you don't know what's going on. So you don't care about any of them. And um, I was bored. And like and like I said, like the pacing with like the like the the editing between these random moments thrown together to try to make a like a, a narrative is it's hor- horribly done. It's just um, oh man, they just jump around the story so quick and so often. Like some of these little scenes are like 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 five seconds, like walking down a beach, boom, and then you're just like what? And like what what, what is this person doing? And then the next minute they're back at the house, and you're like what? It just none. <laughs> it didn't make sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. This this plot was rough, very rough. So. I don't really have much more to say about it, um, other than not good. All right, let's let's move on, and we'll take a look at the the setting. Okay, so uh, the setting for boarding house. Um, there's going to be a familiar theme here. I don't even know if there was a setting for this film, and I. That that sounds strange to say because every movie is set in a certain spot, but um, I, I guess the ma- the majority of the film obviously was set within the the house, the the boarding house, you know. Um, but the house doesn't really act as like a character in terms of like a setting. And usually these films are like there's a you know you're at like a campground and it's kind of a character because they're moving around and they're utilizing the different areas of the campground. Sometimes they're being used for kill. Sometimes they're being used to hide. Um, and they kind of the setting kind of is like a piece of the film. And this one didn't feel like that at all. It's just this house is just there. It's the place where. The movie takes place. Um, you know, it's. I think it's just because, like I said, there's so many of these little random scenes that are like some are in the house and some are outside the house, and because you, and you, you're, you're taken out of the house um, to like just different various locations so abruptly because of the editing. It's just like, like like you're in the house one minute and then you're on the streets of L.A. This film, this the movie was was uh, shot in Los Angeles. And so, yeah, so you're in the house, and then you're on the streets of L.A., then you go to, like, a beach, and then you go back to, like, an office building, and then all through this, you're going back and forth between the house, of all these different characters. Some are in the house, some are at an office, some are at the beach, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, it's nonstop little edited bits. Um, but the, these these changes in locations, they like I said, they happen so often, and, and they're edited so clunky, that none of them feel important to the movie, uh, I- including the boarding house, um, it's I, I I don't know. It's just yeah. In terms of setting, there's really nothing special going on. Um, I think this is the first time um, that I've ever like questioned watching one of these movies. Like, is is there actually a setting? Like, well, what is the setting? Like, I guess it's technically the boarding house because the majority of the film occurs there. But it's just it's really weird because you just you don't you just don't feel it there's nothing there's nothing going on so i don't know very strange setting is what it is i guess so yeah let, let's move on and uh we'll talk about the kills okay so boarding house has a total of eight kills that i counted that may be off because uh well we'll get into it but eight if if the number is eight, that's pretty good. That that's a good number for a slasher flick. Unfortunately, um, it it doesn't really feel like that because some of these kills they're they're so quick and honestly they're because of the editing. It's um, it, 
it's questionable whether or not they were actually killed because it was off screen or it was so quick because of the editing. I mean, you don't even know if some of these people were killed. So, um, like everything else with this movie, the kills are confusing. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm going to put it at eight because I, I feel like that was a good, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's around eight kills. Um, the types of kills that we get in this film, um, there is some bladed stuff, um, which is, you know, which is what I prefer in these films, um, but then we have, we have some different stuff, which is good, we have like, uh, we have like an electrocution, like a bathtub electrocution, which in theory is, is, is really cool for one of these films, but they don't really pull it off that well, there's like a, like a, like someone like, uh, gets hung, like, you know, like hung by their neck, um, there is a couple of people who got killed by guns, which, you know, that doesn't belong in a slasher at all for me. Um, yeah, like, there's some suicide. There, there, there's a whole bunch of weird, different types of, of kills going on. And, yeah, um... But I, I, I will say that there is some, uh, there's some decent blood effects. Um, and, you know, to be honest, there's, there's, there's moments, they're brief, but there is moments where I, I would say that this movie can get pretty gory at times. Um, you know, for example, that there's, there's one scene where a dude pulls out his own intestines. And it, it, it's a good effect. It kind of reminds me of something from, like, Dawn of the Dead. The original Dawn of the Dead, you know? when you know, Savini's effects when all, like, the intestines and they're, they're, they're eating on them. It's kind of like that a little bit. Um, so it's pretty good. So there is some stuff in here. And whenever there's, like, stabbings or whatnot, like, the blood comes up. And there, it, it gets it gets pretty gory at times. Um, so, yeah, the blood effects are pretty good. But, honestly, the, the kills themselves are just... They're not great, in my opinion. Um, every time, um, there, <laughs> yeah, I, I should say, every time, like, a, a kill was made, they, this is when they went into the weird, like, I don't know if it's called, like, Technicolor, or, like, they, they put, like, these psychedelic things that, like, flash across the screen, like, like, like these red, like, the, like, the killer seeing red or something, I don't know. Um, I guess back in the early 80s, it was a cool effect, you know, they were messing around with the video settings and whatnot on their video cameras, but, uh, yeah, it didn't really work for me, it, it didn't age too well, I don't think, and it was, wasn't really necessary to the plot, because the plot was all over the place anyway, so it's not like it added anything. So, yeah, in terms of kills, like I said, there, there's some good blood, some good gore, but overall, there's nothing great in terms of, like, you know, practical effects or anything like that. It, like I said, if, if anything, the kills are just more confusing than anything else. So it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not going to knock it. I'm not going to say that the kills are a negative, but they're definitely not a standard. All right, let's, uh, let's move on and uh, talk about the nudity. Okay, so, Boarding House, um, has a total of about seven nude scenes that I counted. There might be a little more, because some of them were pretty quick and whatnot, but, um, yeah, this film has a lot of nudity. Um, if, and you know what, if, if you're watching these movies just for the sake of trying to see some nudity, uh, you, you might find, you might get a little more out of this film movie than I did, because there, there's plenty of that to go around. Um, basically, the the nudity never stops in, in, in this movie, um, and it's sprinkled through, like, pretty consistently throughout the entire, the entire film, movie. Um, sometimes it is, you know, rather quick shots, so just little, um, you know, quick edits, like flashes, whatnot. Um, other times, there's some pretty long, gratuitous shots where the camera lingers, um, you, and you get, like, a little bit of everything. You get some, you know, female, um, you know, backside stuff, you get some, you get full, a couple times, full frontal female, you get male rear end nudity, um, just, there's a lot of skin on display here. 
Um, you know, and in, in terms of the type of scenes you can expect, like, it's your typical stuff in these films. There, there's, like, a shower. There's a couple shower scenes. Some of them are really funny because the people are having sex in the shower, and there's body parts, like, jamming up against the, the, the shower glass, and they kind of squish, and it's, like, female parts. It's it's funny. They're, they're, it, it's very gratuitous. Um, but yeah, these shower scenes, there's like, you know, there's obviously a couple sex scenes, um, there's girls playing around in a pool, like, taking each other's clothes off, like, wrestling kind of stuff like that, um, there's actually a brief rape scene, um, it's not, it's not over the top, but it's, it's a little rapey for sure, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of that kind of stuff, and like I said, it's just constantly throughout the film, and even when the women are not nude, they're always just walking around the house in either, like, very revealing or, like, sometimes see-through lingerie, or they're in their, their, like, bikini bathing suits, which doesn't leave very much to the imagination, especially from the backside. Like, it's just, there's non-stop skin throughout this film, and it's, I, it's, like, constant, like, titillation throughout the whole film. So, it, like I said, if, if that's your thing, if, if that's, like, the, the main draw to these sorts of things, if, uh, these sorts of movies for you, then this one definitely doesn't disappoint. There's, there's more than enough to go around. So, yeah, Boarding House is definitely a good one for, uh, the, uh, the good old-fashioned TNA, I guess. Alright, let that, that, that's, that's enough of that. Let's, uh, let's move on and, uh, Let's talk about this Blu-ray. Alright, so this is the best part of the review right here for me. Uh, this Blu-ray is fantastic. It, this is an amazing release. Um, basically, as you can see here, it's uh, it's kind of a weird one because it's released by like AGFA AGFA. It's like, what's that? The like American genre film archive. Um, so I don't know if it's them, and then, but it's also Bleeding Skull, so it's like a shared thing. But then, um, does it say on the back here? No, it doesn't say on the back here. I got this from Vinegar Syndrome's website. So these are like partner labels with Vinegar Syndrome. So I don't know if they have their own websites. I've never really looked into it, so I'm, I'm sure you can probably go to one or both of these websites and buy this. Um, or you can just go to Vinegar Syndrome. That's where I got mine from. Um, yeah, so, alright, the first thing that we need, okay, let's look at the packaging first, you get the Blu-ray, the, the clear Blu-ray case, which is great, from, um, you know, Vinegar Syndrome always has these blue cases, you get, uh, two discs, um, both Blu-ray, disc one, disc two, and we'll, I'll tell you why in a bit here, and you actually get reversible cover art, which, uh, this is the cover art I'm really familiar with, but I just don't like it. It's really faded, like the reds are kind of orangey. Um, so I went with this. I usually go with the original, but something about this, it just didn't grab me. So anyway, so yeah, you get two Blu-ray discs. Usually you get like a Blu-ray and a DVD. The reason why you get two Blu-rays in this one is because this, there's three cuts of the film on here. Three versions, and there's actually four type total apparently, but we'll get into that. So, the the three versions you get, there you get like what what they call the um, theatrical version, which is like the default on here. So if if you know you grab disc one, you put disc one in, it says play movie. That's gonna be the theatrical version, and what that is, that is the version that was shot on video, and then converted to 35 millimeter film to be shown in the theaters. Um, that version's 87 minutes long. That's what I watched. The second version is called the home video cut. And that is the straight, you know, shot on video um, version um, that was released on home video, not put to the theaters. That one is 98 minutes long. So you get an extra you know, 11 minutes from the theatrical cut. And then the third version they call the Psycho Killer Cut. That is also 98 minutes long. And from my understanding, it's very similar to the home video cut. It's like, it's like, like they're the same running time. There's just, I think there's like some different um, alternate like title card. Uh, I think there's a few slight shot changes. But it, it, they're basically very similar. So I think the, the home video cut is the more regular one. Um, some people are upset because there is a... Um, a fourth version of this called the director's cut and that 
is an additional 58 minutes from the hour and a half film. So it's over two hours, almost two and a half hours. I cannot imagine watching this movie for two and a half hours. Oh boy. Anyway, that's not on here. I think there's like a DVD that had the director's cut. So if you want to torture yourself, go seek that out. Um, now, all right, like I said, I watched the theatrical cut and honestly, it was a mistake. I, I it's funny, as it, when, when I ordered this in, in the mail, um, before it came to me or when it first arrived, I did research because I knew about the different cuts. I'm like, which one should I watch? And I remember reading which one I want to watch, but it was a while ago. I, I, I This was sitting on my shelf for a few months at least, and I forgot which one, and I just went with the, the default one that came up on disc one. Um, I should have watched the home video cut because the theatrical cut looked terrible. Um, yeah, sure, it was stretched, you know, like, like the widescreen to fit, you know, to, to fit the, uh, you know, what, like the 16 by 9, whatever the, 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 the aspect ratio is. Um, but I've never seen, ever, like, especially on Blu-ray, I've never seen a film print with so much damage. The entire thing had, like, the little vertical lines through it, the whole film, the specs. It was terrible, terrible condition. Um, it, it wasn't... You got used to it. It wasn't like super distracting, but I, I've never seen a print look so bad. Um, after it was over, I was messing around, obviously, in the special features, and I was like, "Oh, let me check out the other, the home video cut," and it looked super clean. Like, yeah, it had the four by three um, aspect ratio, so it was square. And you, you know, maybe there was stuff missed on the. I don't know. Maybe there wasn't because it was shot on video. That's the way it was supposed to look, I think. And it was all like the. Um, it would have been a much better experience because all the colors were like crisp and clear. Like, yeah, they weren't maybe as as much resolution as the film. But it might, I don't know. It looked way better. So if you ever watch it, watch the home video cut. In my opinion, it would, it would have been a much better experience because it was just a cleaner image. You could see everything. Like the colors, everything was brighter. It was, um, yeah, I don't know. So um, I, I regret not fully doing my research to, to get some opinions on what to watch. Maybe people prefer the theatrical version. I, I, I wish I would have cut, watched the home video cut. Um, now as bonus things here, like I said, you get the three cuts in the movie. I'm not going to read all this, but basically what you get, you get, like I said, the three, um, three cuts of the film, and then you actually get another film. Uh, where is it at on here? Right here. Uh. Sally and Jess from 1989. Um, this guy here, um, I, I didn't, I didn't even mention it. His name, or what's his name? Uh, John Wintergate. He's the director. He wrote this film, and he's the main actor. And his wife is um, one the main one of the main actresses. So they're like a duo. And so he did this film, and then in 1989, it's the only other film he did. It's called Sally and Jess, and and you get it on here. Um, you get the un, unreleased. Um, family film from the makers of Boarding House. So that's, again, it's the same couple. And then you get a... So yeah, so three cuts of the film, a fourth film, you get two commentary tracks for Boarding House, you get an you get an additional commentary track for Sally and Jess, which is cool. Um, so yeah, you get all that. Then you get... Um, then there's a couple of things. There's like an on-set footage documentary or whatever. On-set footage, um, which is about 21 minutes. And then you get uh, music videos um, from the film, which is about 25 minutes. And I'll, I'll say, the music and like the score, I actually really liked. There's, there's a couple songs in here. Like I said, one of the... His wife, the the actress, the character in this film was the girl who was in a rock band, and she she was on stage singing and doing some songs, and they were really good, fun '80s pop rock type stuff. And uh, so I guess they actually, and she's an actual singer, I guess, back in the '80s. Um, her name is she has like a weird name. It's um, Kalasu. Yeah, I don't know. So she's on the commentary with Sally and Jess Kalasu and John Wintergate. And, um, yeah, and, uh, so the music is, is good, so that's kind of cool. Um, then you get, like, a trailer and some images and stuff like that. So, tons of special features. Um, this is a great package, very good package. You know, it's, um, <laughs> it's too bad because it's such a, in my opinion, it's such a bad movie. Um, but you get a good package, so... Yeah, take that for what it's worth. If, if, if you're, um, there is people who are fans of this film... So, if you're a fan of the film, definitely, th this is the best way to, to, 
to watch this. There's tons of features. So yeah, fantastic. All right, enough about the Blu-ray. Let's move on. Let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. Okay. So, yeah, Boarding House um, is a pretty terrible film, in my opinion, of course. Um, and I base that opinion mostly on the plot. Um, usually a bad plot can be saved, you know, in, from my perspective. You know, if a film has some good, fun kills, or unique kills, uh, if there's like a really neat, interesting setting... Uh, you know, throwing some nudity, like all, all the little things, like some good music, some like a good score. There's lots of different things. A good villain, some fun characters who can't act but are still fun to watch. There's lots of little things that can make a bad movie still enjoyable, even if the plot is atrocious. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> unfortunately this film, there's just, you know, except, like, if... if with the exception of like the copious amounts of nudity that's in this in, in in this movie, there was nothing else here for me to save the plot. It's just, uh, yeah, I I don't know. It's just it was it was a tough watch. Um, you know, there like I said, there was some decent blood effects. Um, so you're not walking away empty-handed. Like I said, you get the nudity, and there is some a, a few good fun kills, blood effects, and whatnot. So. Um, it's just, there's just not enough to make up for everything else that was just so confusing and boring and painful at times, to be honest. Uh, now, like I said, I, I kind of like the look of, um, the shot on video version. Like I said, that's not what I watched, but I watched some afterwards, and I, I like the look of that. Like, these cheesy shot on video movies, they got a charm to them, um, so... I don't know. I, I guess if, 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 if you're a fan of shot on video horror, uh, there is a, a place for this um, if you watch the right version. But I, I honestly, I, I don't think I can I can recommend this movie. Um, you know, not not even as like one of those, uh, you know, so bad it's good style of slashers. I just, I, I just can't recommend it even on that because honestly, I, I don't think I can sit through this again. Um, it, it was too painful. It, it really was for me. It was too painful of a sit through, so I can't, in good conscience, s suggest um, anyone else do so either. So yeah, I, I guess I'll say check it out only as like a curiosity, and you know maybe to try and test your patience for <laughs> really bad horror movies. Um, because I know that that's a thing, and I'm I, I kind of do that too. I there's a couple other films I haven't seen yet. Um, Last Slumber Party, Terror at Ten Killer that have terrible reputations, and I really want to see them. And this this was one of them as well. Dream Maniac is another one I have. I haven't watched yet. I have it though. I have a copy. I'll probably watch that soon and just torture myself to see how bad they are. Because sometimes you end up liking them. Um, unfortunately for me. This isn't one of them. I, I, I did not like this. So, um, and it's a shame because this Blu-ray Blu, Blu packaging is, is amazing. And I just wish there was a better movie attached to all the goodies you get. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's it. That's, uh, that's my, my review and thoughts on 1982's Boarding House. So uh, watch at your own risk, I guess. All right. That's it. So, yeah. Until next time. All right. See ya.